All right, now that we've successfully installed Ruby on our Windows machine, we're ready to download and install our text editor. That's where we're actually going to be writing our Ruby code. So let's head to a new link right here in my browser. I'm going to go to Adam, A-T-O-M dot I-O. Okay, so this is the web page for the Atom text editor. Uh, it's developed by the exact same people who work on GitHub. If you don't know about GitHub, it's an online storage place for code. Uh, plenty of famous open source projects are hosted there. GitHub is basically a place where people back up their code online, track its changes, things like that. The real point of that is that Atom is a text editor that is industry standard, that's backed up by a large open source development team that has the support of a large tech company behind it. So it's here to stay. It's growing in popularity very quickly. And I think it's a really great choice for people who are new to programming, who need something easy to pick up, but also something that can evolve into being a, a fully complex text editor. Now, of course, if you're familiar with another text editor like Sublime or Notepad++ or even a full-scale IDE for Ruby, perhaps you're coming from another language, you're welcome to choose whatever tool you'd like. Uh, as long as you can follow along, that's all good for this course. For anybody who's beginning programming or beginning Ruby, I recommend this. This is what I'll be using throughout the course on my end. So let's go ahead and begin our installation here by clicking the red download button, and that will begin the download here. All right, so this is in a pretty big file. It's about 100 megabytes, give or take. Luckily, the installation process doesn't take that long as well. Once we install Atom, we're also going to need to install an extension or an add-on. Uh, Atom comes with a fully featured uh, collection of both custom themes and what they call packages. In fact, right here we can see the packages link for all of the, the different packages that are available for Atom, and there are thousands. And some packages just simply enhance the functionality of the editor. Maybe they add a different menu bar. Some of them do silly things like they make your text explode when you write. Some things actually help you with folder management, file management. They're all basically extensions, little things that you can do to help make your process of coding easier, or simpler, funner, or just sillier. All right, and we'll need to install a add-on called Atom Runner, and Atom Runner will allow us to actually run our Ruby code within the uh, text editor, so we don't always have to be running to the command prompt and executing the code there. So this file has downloaded for me, so I'm going to head to my downloads folder. Here is that Atom setup executable. I'm going to double-click on that. You can then click Run. And this process should take very quickly, I mean less than 10 seconds once we see the, the launch prompt. And then it's just going to launch the Atom text editor automatically, and here it is. This is what your welcome screen should look like. So on the left, you have a little bit of an introduction to Atom. And right here on the right, you're going to have a collection of options. This is just basic things like how you open a project, you install a package, choosing an aesthetic theme. We'll dive into um, all of that within a few moments. Of course, we have this checkbox right here that says show the welcome guide when opening Atom. I recommend keeping this checked for a while just so you can play around with some of these different um, explanations in your spare time. And once you kind of get the general gist of how it works, then you can uncheck it and this welcome screen will go away. Up here, we have what are called tabs. They operate exactly as they would in a modern web browser. Whenever we have multiple files open, each one is going to be represented in its own separate tab. All right. So we can do things like drag tabs over, we can create separate windows with our tabs like this, and so on and so forth. So we have a bunch of tabs open when we, when we open Atom. I would recommend just closing them all for now. So let's go ahead and close them all. And that's, uh, that's where we need to be. All right, so the first thing I want to do is set up Atom Runner immediately. In order to do that, we'll have to access our settings. Those are available under File, under the menu, and then Settings. So it's going to pop up this list, uh, this menu option right here. On the left, we have a bunch of tabs. Each one of them relate to a different combination of settings. First thing I want to do is go to install on the very bottom. And this is where we can install either packages, which as I mentioned are just add-ons, or themes. Themes are entirely uh, revolve around things like changing the color scheme, changing the colors of your text and the Atom text editor and that kind of stuff. So let's begin with our Atom Runner package. I have packages selected right here. And I'm going to search for Atom-Runner. Press Enter. It'll take a second to search. And the very first result here, Atom-Runner, is what you want. Click the blue Install button. It'll take a few seconds, and then it will install that uh, library for us, the add-on. Once it's installed, you can go ahead and click on Settings right here. And here it's going to offer us a, a quick piece of documentation, which is great because you don't even have to go to the Internet to get it. Right here, you can see a sample. To the left, we have a collection of code. In fact, this is actually a Ruby code right here. 
and to the right we have the output from the atom runner package so this is the actual contents the output of the ruby file that's written on the left and this is basically how our lessons are going to work i'm going to begin each lesson by writing a bunch of code and then we're going to see the impact or the output of that in our atom runner window on the right in addition to running our files from the atom runner within the text editor we can also of course run them directly from the command prompt and we'll certainly show you an example of that in the near future if you scroll down here you can see the documentation continues with the commands you can see here the command to actually launch the atom runner on windows is going to be alt plus r so in case you ever forget you can always come back to this documentation and remind yourself keep in mind on my end i'm going to be recording my lesson series here primarily on a mac so if i ever use a mac central command like command r just realize that probably means the equivalent of something like alt plus r or control plus r on a windows machine usually the main letter will remain constant it's just the other key that you need to press that's going to be modified a bit usually uh, when i press for example command s on windows it's going to be control s but I, I trust that those differences are going to be pretty small and you'll be able to figure out what i mean if you're on a windows computer all right so i'm going to go back to my install tab right here and i'm just going to show you how to install a sample theme in case you're interested in finding something that fits you you can go to themes right here and i'm going to get rid of this atom runner and let's search for a theme i'm going to search for a popular theme and it's called monokai light it's going to be m-o-n-a-k-a-i dash light once again press enter the process is again as simple as it is to install a package we can see the very first result under my themes menu is monokai light Simply press install here and that will load it locally to your computer so you now have it available to use. Let's uh, dive into one more setting that I want to alter before I show you how to modify the themes. On the left side menu, you can click on editor right here. And if I scroll down to the very bottom here, this option right here that says tab length represents the number of spaces that are used to represent a tab. The tab is that key on your keyboard that you press to create some indentation. If I click into this box, we can see the value is set by default to 2. Uh, in case it's set to something different, just make sure to change that value to 2. Uh, this is especially critical in Ruby because Ruby uses indentation a lot, or at least we do as programmers visually, in order to segment code and kind of place it into chunks so we know how everything is structured. So indentation visually does play a role in Ruby, so we want to make sure uh, that we're following the best practice, and the general Ruby community standard is that a tab represents um, two spaces. As far as using a tab versus two spaces, once you set this option equal, you can use either, either or. It's up to you. All right. Now let's show you how to modify a theme. So I'm going to go here to themes right here on the left. And up top, we have UI theme and syntax theme. UI a theme refers to the user interface theme. That's the general text editor. So that's things like this stuff right here, the background. While syntax theme refers to the actual content of the files that we write whenever we're writing code what is that background going to look like? So you can see the default here is set to Adam Dark and Adam Dark. I'm going to change it to the settings I'm going to be using throughout my tutorials. You can certainly follow along or pick whatever combination you'd like. Keep in mind, you're, you're more than welcome to choose whatever you'd like, but if you do choose a different combination, your color scheme may be different. So if you're following along, just note that I may have, for example, green while you might have orange. Uh, that doesn't matter. That's just a visual look. The code is going to remain the same no matter what. But in case you want it to be exact so you can follow along visually with me, it's a good idea perhaps to follow the exact same themes I have. So I'm going to be using Atom Light for my UI theme. You can see as soon as I select it, Atom changes to the slider look. And for my syntax theme, which again is going to be what's actually inside my text editor, I'm going to choose the actual one that we just installed, the custom one called Monokai Light. We're not going to see any change right here immediately because that's actually in our um, code editor. So the last thing I just recommend in order to uh, get everything up and running just for safety is to close out of Atom and then just launch it again. You can, of course, always access it by going to your start menu and searching for Atom. It's a regular application. There it is. It's also going to be available. It should be at least on your desktop of your computer, so you can always launch it from there. Once again, you can see my Atom text editor is launching right here with my welcome guide. And as long as this is all set up, then we're all good to get started. And in the next lesson, we'll write our very first line of Ruby code, and we'll practice running it from both the Atom text editor and then the command prompt in the lesson after that. All right, so I'll see you next time.